on and I will get the stream up and running and go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, last week, a week ago, before that, we've had a lot of shit happen in wrestling. Uh, the great thing is no one was there to see it, but we're here to talk about it. We're going to get into all that. The night one of WrestleMania 36, 80, 80, a.k.a. WrestleMania 36.1. We're going to get into all of this and more this week as we... I can't hear the audio. The ring down. There it is. You don't know what hard times are, Daddy. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is professional wrestler and professional podcaster Colt Boom Boom Cabana. My name is Killer Cross. This is the Smoke Show, Scarlet Cordell. What's up, guys? The Apple Machine, Brian Cage. This is Ryan from Pro Wrestling Tees. Sadly, you are not listening to the art of wrestling, but you made a decent choice because you're listening. You are now listening to. And you're listening. And you're listening to. You listen to Breaking Down the Ring. 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 Bring it down. Break. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the most inappropriate pro wrestling show in the motherfucking world. We, wait, you are listening to Breaking Down the Ring, and we are your ring crew. Who's going first? I guess me, Smitty. <laughs> <laughs> clockwork, guys. Like the clock goes. Go, Nick. Oh, yeah. Uh, Nick. I guess. <laughs> Nick's late on everything today right now. <laughs> Z, it's your turn. Yeah, oh, you still high? <laughs> I'm Z. And Hi. me, the all Mikey one, Mikey <laughs> himself. Ladies and gentlemen, shit's crazy around here, as you can tell. Uh, we don't have the studio. We're doing things similar to you see on the news. Um, basically, we're all pulling a Chris Cuomo thing there from CNN. We're all doing our show from our house in this Zoom meeting. Hopefully, it's been fixed by Microsoft, so there's not a whole bunch of shit going into my computer right now. So we'll get that going. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, not a lot saw in person, but definitely a bunch to talk about. The wrestling world has completely changed because of coronavirus. Uh, if you've been watching anything in wrestling, it's been a excitingly crazy. <laughs> different than what we have been used to our entire lives. Professional wrestling has always been a spectator sport. The fans inside of the building have been 50% of the action that's been going on. More, more than that. More, way more than that. I don't believe that. I believe it's 50% fans and then 50% the wrestlers, the production. If you take the, the crowd reaction out of it, most matches are just plain boring. Yeah, so that's more than 50%. I can't, I can't agree with that because a lot of the matches that we have seen without a crowd have been really good matches. Okay. I mean, if, as long as the participants – like, if you're going to tell me I got to watch a Mandy Rose uh, versus Natalia match with no crowd, you're fucking right. It's definitely a crowd interaction, but the crowd's not interacting anyway. <laughs> Just like, what the fuck's this? I don't want well, to see it. Especially with the ladder match. I mean, like, there were parts of it where you really need that, the crowd, when they're climbing the ladder and going up for the belts, and Michael Cole or, you know, whoever, they're just like, oh, there they go, going for the belts. But the match itself was a lot of fun to watch. I, I thought the match itself was spectacular, to be very honest. Uh, for yeah, but with the crowd, it would have been better. Like, it would have went from spectacular to greatest ever, however you want to fucking jump the All tier. the drama. But also, ladder matches, ladder matches are crowd poppers anyway. Again, that's why I said 50%, because you got all the work that the production crew, the wrestlers, and everything are putting on. And that, 
the crowd there is the other half. It is a strong piece of the puzzle. You can't, it, it, it definitely takes it away. It makes it different, but there are companies that are putting on these no show matches. I mean, these no crowd match uh, shows that aren't bad. If you've seen AEW the pa uh, past couple weeks, AEW would have wrestlers acting like the crowd, but betting. So it's not like they're really cheering anything. And, but, and you'd have the wrestlers in the ring where you could hear the trash talking, which with some it's great with others. It's, Man, you're fucking boring. The real problem is you start <laughs> really paying attention to a lot of the things that are going on in the ring, and you become really intricately uh, – you start nitpicking a lot of stuff because there's no crowd reaction where you're like, why are they chanting what? Why are they chanting this is awesome, this is not awesome? So, Nick, we'll start with you. In the grand scheme of things, when you've been watching, uh, tell me what are some of your highs and what are some of your lows – of these no crowd shows um i would i would have to say you know there's been a few matches that the match quality was was pretty solid as as far as you know you can tell that they're especially okay so for example last night daniel bryan and um we'll and talk Sami about Zane. wrestlemania later sir I'm okay. So you're just talking Raw, SmackDown, yeah, Raw, so. SmackDown, AEW, NXT, all that fun stuff. Um, I actually a highlight for me was uh, the first AEW Dynamite that they did at Daly's place in front of just you know ten or fifteen wrestlers that were in the crowd. Mm -hmm. I liked that part of it because you know you did lose the crowd, but then to see the wrestlers and like MJF and Sean Spears, you know, placing bets on the side and and talking shit. And uh, Colt Cabana in the crowd, you know, the crowd, um, you know, getting approached by Kip Sabian. And that kind of that element was, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. And it really helped without having an entire crowd there. Um, some of the lows, there have been a couple matches like on SmackDown and Raw that really just were kind of filler fodder, if you will. So I don't have anything to drink. Um, and it just. Open up the door. I, I just didn't have any interest in them, and the crowd would have helped, I think, maybe a little, but I don't know. Yeah. Smitty, same thing for you. For the Raws, the SmackDowns, you've also caught some other things. Obviously, Impact uh, has been pre-taped for a while, so it's been coming in with the crowd, um, and, but you've been catching some of the MLW stuff as well. What have been some highs and some lows for you? Uh, my highs are it's pretty much that um, – Lots of shows are just putting on actual shows. I do something on low, actually. So, because the low goes to my high. Uh, my low is the way WWE has been putting maybe one or two previous pay per view matches on. You have enough time to act, and you have one of the most talented rosters you have had ever. And so, this is also a time I feel like WWE could have used some of that just extra time to get some of these uh, guys that you don't see on TV, on TV, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, I like the way uh, that goes into my high with my high that all the rest of these companies are just let, let the wrestlers go out there, have a show, and have fun. It's so, like you tell like, AEW, like, some of the companies are just having fun with. The MLW shows, I, I don't watch them. Like, they, they, like, they seem like they're out there having fun. And mm -hmm. like that, Impact, uh, Impact is just kind of it's super progressive about what they've been doing. So, even with, like, it just, like you said, they're pre recorded. So, we don't know what they're going to do as, as it pertains to, uh, like, the no crowd shows yet. Well, we'll get into all of these statewide clo closures <clears throat> that have been going around uh, around the United States. I mean, for I think it's all but like eight that have uh, stay at stay at home mandates from the governors, which is we're going to get into uh, as far as other things. Um, I have to say, look, I think a my highs. AW's first show was really good because it was unexpected as well, right? You had, the, like Nick said, you had the guys in the crowd making bets, doing things. They kind of did that for other, I mean, not kind of, they definitely did that for other ones. Like when Cody was thrown into the crowd and Britt Baker's like, I have a shoe. And she starts beating him up and everything. <clears throat> it's, it's cool. Cool. but to me, I'm watching it. And I guess it, it's, it's a little different for me because I'm sitting here going, man, I had this coronavirus and you guys are all just not giving a shit about anything, right? Like 
you got five, six people in one side of the crowd, five, six people on the other side of the crowd, and they're definitely not practicing six feet away, right? And then you get the crowd, someone thrown into that crowd and they start beating them with the shoe. And it's like a beating a bunch of people beating them up. And it's like, man, you are, it's like, what the hell, you know? And so, I, but that's different for me, obviously, because I fucking had this fucking sickness and I, and I saw how, what it does to people when it hits you, when you're one of the people that aren't in the 80% of the mild range, but at the same time, it's different and it at least makes it kind of fun. Then you get into the things on the WWE side and man, you are seeing some of the best promos that you have seen in WWE in a very long time. Yeah, Seth, what, Seth around what, the ring with Kevin Owens, uh, Randy Orton, Edge, all of these people are cutting promos and it makes it seem like the crowd was a problem, right? You, the crowd would come in there and just start, you know, I mean, they, there was a while where the Raw after WrestleMania, everyone's like, I'm sick of these beach balls. They're not paying attention to us. We're trying to get this crowd invested. And like we were saying, the crowd is a strong part of all of it. So the fact that the big crowd wasn't uh, even paying attention, it was throwing off wrestlers, being in matches, being in promos. And you've seen some of just these high caliber promos since the crowd is gone. Are we going in? Does this mean we're going to go into a way of cutting promos without the crowd? No, but it does kind of make it seem like the crowd might be going, hey, if we shut up for a second and listen and cheer and boo and we're talking, rather than trying to hijack a show, maybe this is going to be a much better product. And at the same time, that we went right back into the lows is because of the exact same things that I was saying. Regardless of this being a no, these no crowd shows, there's definitely things that you pick up on a lot more because there's no crowd to distract you or there's no crowd to cut to. And now you're cutting into the match, staying in the match the entire time. I have to say one of my biggest problems is in AEW. And I feel like I'm always shitting on AEW, like AEW is always the problem. But man, Lucha Soros. Luchasaurus has just seemed sloppy every time I've watched him wrestle, like missing a knee completely. Like, look, I understand that you're not supposed to, you know, actually hit the people, but fuck, man, Chris Benoit went and did a whole bunch of squats and everything. And by the way, we are going to get into some of the dark side of the ring stuff that's been appearing. Chris Benoit went and did a whole bunch of squats because he didn't graze Jericho enough with a spinning heel kick. He, he, al cool. he also went and hung himself from his Hold camera. Hold on, get out There's a comparison here. <laughs> so, but it's like the, the perfection that they wanted and everything like that. And then you got, we were looking at Luchasaurus, and it's like, here's the face that he's supposed to be hitting a knee on, and the knee stops here. And it's like, dude, there's a foot in between you. Why are you even uh, – Remember when we did the wrestling promo and, like, we were getting Hold on. So – that's a part of reason why it's a bad thing to not have these crowds. And that brings the lows out in this is because you're trying to pay attention to it all. And it's just, you're looking at it going, well, there's a fuck up. There's a fuck up. There's a fuck up because they can't do all the camera cuts that they want to do. Now Z, uh, what are some of your highs and lows from the raws, the NXTs, the AEWs and stuff, your highs and your lows from these no crowd shows? Um, my high is that, I don't have to watch them all the time. And really, I only got to watch like an hour and a half of the show because it's been like a WrestleMania replay or some other video package bullshit, which is cool. Um, I don't know. I it, The crowd not being there definitely takes takes the drama out of it. And you can definitely tell who can re – who was taught to wrestle in front of a crowd and – who just does it? Like, who did it in... A performance center? No, like, it, who <laughs> yeah. did it in bingo halls with nobody there? You know what I mean? Like, you can just tell because like, some of these guys just continue to perform even though there's no crowd. And others have been hindered by it. Um, um, I, I don't really have a low. I My low would be the fact that commentary is kind of boring without a crowd, I guess. But... I mean, I get to skim through my wrestling again, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Makes me happy. <laughs> Lazy bastard. <laughs> Why? 
I'll be honest, I've been doing the same thing. I don't want to, like, the Royal Rumble match, especially when they put the Royal Rumble match. It's like, this match just fucking happened. Like, yeah, yeah. Chamber. I don't the need... The was, like, a week did, ago. Yeah, yeah. They did the... Oh, yeah. Um, that's exactly what you know like when they put up the becky lynch triple threat match it made sense because they were talking about how she had won everything things like that and then you know becky lynch has has been had this year-long run on the division with the raw women's championship so let's show how she won it you know makes sense Shawn hey, michaels Mikey, versus sorry just a real quick heads up uh facebook live started working so you're going out live yeah, I got I got that notification. I'm gonna okay. go share it in a second. Um, the HBK versus Ric Flair and Ric Flair's final WWE match. What point did that play? At the same time, though, if they would have instead of showing random matches and started showing off a whole bunch of matches that were really good at WrestleMania, or you know, that would have been fine too. Because like, oh, we're showing some of the WrestleMania's greatest matches because we're hyping up WrestleMania. Showing Royal Rumble matches and Elimination Chamber matches didn't make a lot of sense to me. Nick, where are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think the Elimination Chamber one, you know, when they did that, they were still kind of at a point where it was in limbo whether or not they were going to even do WrestleMania, you know, in any capacity. Um, I still didn't like it, you know, but, uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, on SmackDown and Raw every single week, for the last, you know, two, three weeks, they should have been playing the greatest WrestleMania matches. If you're going to you need some filler because you're not filling the entire two or three hours with in-ring action that's from the Performance Center. Well, the biggest problem could, is they don't know what the biggest or greatest matches from WrestleMania are. Yeah, they want clearly. you to believe something completely different than it actually is. Clearly, yeah. Uh, they want you to know, believe their take on it. What, Smitty? And it's still like they want you to believe their take on it because they have their list in. No, no, that's one hundred percent what happens. They try to rewrite history all the fucking time. Yeah, I, Z put something online about that. And I went and watched it, and I'm like, oh no. Mm-hmm. That's, I understand why him and Walt got to do it. Oh, oh, he I said he built his own post. I didn't see it. I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, Smitty, what are your thoughts on the? I mean, I guess you have the same thing. I just want to hear everyone's comments. Like, these random pay-per-view matches being shown, uh, what do you think they could have done to do it better? Should they have done it? Or is it something that you're enjoying? Um, I really don't care for it. They really, like, this breaks me because I've seen them all. <laughs> and, and honestly, if they wanted to do it better, like, I agree with you. You said they should have just did, like, the best of, like, WrestleMania to hype up WrestleMania. Don't have like the random triple threat between Cena, Rollins, and Lesnar, and the elimination chamber that was like really a week, like a week ago, a week before you showed it on um on SmackDown. <laughs> At, have a theme of don't showing these pay per views. Don't just it's more like they'll just do like random matches on each show. Z, you obviously haven't watched them, so I guess you don't really care. Well, I mean, I, I can give you my point of view from a no crowd last night. There's certain matches that we're gonna talk. Last... We're going to talk about WrestleMania a little bit. Well, right. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the match, but there are certain matches last night that if they had a crowd, they would have I'm, – I'm pretty sure the ending would have been different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the crowd does affect it. But it is what it is. Where this is wrestling now for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> well, that's part of what we're going to get into next. So, with all of these states doing statewide shutdowns and non-essential businesses having to be closed, WWE, as far as I know, has only pre-recorded everything up until Monday Night Raw. Maybe I think we got some NXT as well because they've been talking about the Johnny Gargano Tommaso Ciampa match for NXT. Um, so I don't know what they have for SmackDown. I, I guess WWE is not allowed to do anything. Else. I mean, they're telling people no more than like five people in Florida with the statewide shutdown that finally went into effect shortly after WWE finished taping everything. I don't know if WWE had a say in that. Wink, wink. Uh, right, you know, Vince McMahon on a phone call with the President of the United States talking to the orange man. Um, so 
I don't know if they're going to be able to record or tape anything. So you're kind of getting your first professional wrestling off season. It seems Z is this a good thing for wrestling or is it something that will take the, uh, fans away and at the same time could it set up for an actual off season every year if it doesn't hurt uh the bottom line of these companies all right first of all vince will never do one every year because then it's money out of his pocket um but in, in my personal opinion in off season right after wrestlemania would would be good because then you'd have uh you have time to do like a, a reset you know, take uh, some of these guys away from the fans and maybe get them a, a fresh a fresh start when they come back. Maybe not change the gimmick, but give the fans enough time to forget certain things. You know what I mean? Like, it, it gives you time to suspend your belief for when they want whatever stories they want to do next. Oh, like Roman Reigns is a mysterious pull, being pull, mysteriously being pulled when he first got a match? I don't know if you guys noticed, again, um, I won't give anything away yet because we'll talk about it later, but last night there are certain matches that went in certain ways, and I think they went in certain ways because all this is happening. Um, so, that, so I'm, I think they're going to – what some storylines they were going to kill yesterday, they more than likely extended maybe, I, I don't know, through SummerSlam, have a big spectacle of it then. Don't really know, but I just feel that all this it kind of predetermined some of these matches that were already predetermined to go a different way. Smitty, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to what wrestling have an off <laughs> Right, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, fuck oh, this. Why am I on this show? Why do I even talk about this? Oh, Why did I wake up for this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was more so like, like uh, when it comes to wrestling in the off season, I'm not sure about it because uh, I kind of agree with you. Like it would make, uh, but uh, uh, a different reason, it would give creative, uh, it would give creative more time to actually make more developing storylines, in which that could possibly invest people more than these little short term things they have going on right now. But um, lots of wrestlers even said in their po- on podcasts and interviews that time off is sometimes time off is one of, is one of the worst things you can have in the, in, this, in the industry. I that was my other thing. Like I guess I <laughs> I get that it kind of helps wrestlers um, <clears throat> bodies heal and things like that. But at the same time, I, I would think it's got to be kind of weird because you're so used to taking, you know, Orlando Christopher used to say it's like getting hit by a car at 30 miles an hour, right? Like the, taking some of these bumps is like that. So I, when your body is used to it and then you take a break from it, it's gotta be way more painful to get back into it. Nick, well, so, yeah, I mean, that's a really good point, especially because this, you know, break, if they do go on a break, could be, um, you know, it's not gonna be a week, it's not gonna be two weeks, it could be a month, it could be two months. Um, you know, and it just, I think it could be a blessing for some of these guys that are maybe nursing some, you know, underlying injuries that they've been trying to work through. But at the same time, like you said, you know, if you get back into it in two months from now, and is that going to be detrimental to them getting back in the ring? Will they be a little more prone to getting an injury? Um, So it's, you know, then you have the idea of a reset and everybody coming back fresh, but you know, it, I don't know, man. It could go either way. It really could. D, you were about to say something? <clears throat> oh, I was just going to say, like, my roommate was an independent wrestler, too, and he said that you kind of build up a callus. Like, uh, old guys that used to work, like, they were saying you have more injuries nowadays because the workers get more time off than ever before. Whereas when you were working, you know, 360 days, your body kind of just built up a callus around it and it didn't affect you the same way. Right. But when you take time off, you get, you get soft, so to say. Not my words, their words. Which, yeah, I mean, that's, again, I mean, that's that's what I'll- any type of job that you do, repetition is always going to be better, especially if it's something in a physical form. If you're working out or something like that, you know, anyone who goes to the gym consistently – that's why, you know, I mean, Got it. 
Um, but anyone who goes to the gym consistently, that's why you have to ramp up whatever you're doing. Either you're going to go longer on your cardio, you're going to add weights to your, um, your barbell, or, you know, because the bottom line is, is you get complacent and it sits and it doesn't do anything to make your body better. So therefore you would have to think that doing any type of wrestling inside of a ring, which some of these guys might have them at home and be able to train and everything, but it's way different with uh, if it's not in a match setting so it's got to be it might have to lay off and then you got these guys come back and everyone's all like ow that hurt because now i'm getting more injured like you know z was smitty what are your thoughts is it i already said like uh a lot of like a lot like off season was was sounds nice on paper but lots of wrestlers have always said time off is one of the worst things you've ever had at times Z, did you just drag something across the table? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I had a plate. I had a plate holding my phone up on the right angle, so I didn't have to like duck <laughs> into the frame. Fair. Um, I feel like there's a very distinct possibility that Smitty is not wearing pants or anything of that matter besides the hoodie. He's got pants on. Uh, Wait, we were supposed to put on pants? <laughs> oh no, I don't have pants on either. I'm just no. saying. Yeah. I mean, I'm not dressed at all. I don't know. I, I, I am pantsless. No, he's not. Oh, God. Assless chaps? No, nah, just underpants. He's the heartbreak. I can't say that word. He's Captain Underpants. <laughs> <Big. laughs> Captain Underpants. I'll say it. Me. <laughs> yeah. I like how you cut it off just like I was thinking it, too. <laughs> um, okay. So, let's say this happens for a very long time. Um. Obviously, in the state of politics, you know, uh, the president wants to open up the country as soon as possible, which on a bit for a business standpoint makes a whole lot of sense. But as far as the sickness standpoint, it makes no fucking sense because we got to see that's why I have the call. He just disappeared. Um, but from the sickness standpoint, like I was saying, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense because. You're trying to like, they're talking about, you know, flatten the curve and make it easier for the hospitals. And the more people stay away from each other, uh, the better for people's health because you're not passing around something that's becoming worse for everyone. So this could be, you know, I mean, some states have got their stay at home going into like June 19th, I think is Virginia, which is crazy to think about. Wow. Um, I think like June 9th. Something like that. Um, other states like us here in Michigan, the governor just extended it to the end of April, uh, the, the final day of April. So it's, it's just a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Each state is doing something differently. So it's very possible, though, that we could not have any type of sport until mid-June, mid-July, because you got to think, things aren't going to just start right back up. You know, if you get into any professional sport, baseball – Everyone's, you know, there's a reason there's spring training games. There's a reason there's uh, now preseason pre games. Uh, what? You said preseason. No, I said spring training games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. Pay uh, attention, Smitty. Then Word. there's a reason Word. that, uh, there's a reason that uh, football has the three preseason games uh, now that it's three since they made their schedule 17 games. And every sport has something that happens before the actual season. So let's say these lockdowns end June 1st. Let's, let's just say that's the end of holy shit. We can finally go do things again as crowds. Baseball is going to take two or three weeks of giving these people. I'll rest. say baseball will probably start July 1st if – it all ends on June 1st because they'll take that month again for pitchers and catchers and shit. Yes, like to set up. So now you have professional wrestling. You can't just get in. I mean, maybe. I think professional wrestling might be the only one that can do it, uh, could do it. But at the same time, you'd want these guys to go get reps. You'd be like, hey, lockdown's over, raw next week. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe one week where you okay, get it all to the fucking performance center, have them, you know, do some reps, get the ring rust off of them because it's been months. WWE stopped taping two weeks ago. Right. So what middle of March. So let's say if it is June 1st, that's April, May, 
that's two and a half months that th these guys are off. Roman's uh, going to come back fat and Owens is going to be ripped. You watch. <laughs> <laughs> Owens wasn't ripped when he left for his injury. So I, I guess, um, what's up, Stefan? Got the Facebook Live up here. Um, I guess, Z, what are you hoping for in the return of all this? Are you hoping that they've taken time to spend to write elongated storylines? Are you hoping that they put something in place to where WWE is a little bit more palatable um, as a weekly show? Yes. <clears throat> to both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm just kind of – the break would be good for me just because I'm so sick with – right now it's great to be a wrestling fan because there's all types of wrestling. But – my life is so oversaturated with wrestling that this nice little break would, would be nice. I'd love it. It'd be great. I wouldn't have to worry about what I did or didn't see. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I could take it or leave it. If they continue to play wrestling during, you know, the times of lockdown, I'm going to continue to watch. So, you know, it is what it is. Okay. Uh, Nick. Um. I think it would be if they, if everybody goes on this lockdown, they have to take a break. Um, to touch on your point, as far as you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> professional sports go, um, I think it would be in their best interest to take a good week or two to reacclimate themselves to getting back in the ring and taking these bumps. And I mean, you'd have to. Um, in the interim. I mean, if it were me and I was running the show, I would put polls out there like, hey, let us know what your <laughs> raw moments are from the fans. You went back over a year ago and said we're going to do more shit for the fans, however Hunter put it. Um, let's see some of the best raws that we've ever seen broadcast. I mean, let's see some of the best SmackDowns that they've ever broadcast. Keep that content on the air, and that will hopefully keep a lot of, you know, fans interested casual fans interested <laughs> keep that shit going ready <clears throat> question again please i was trying to get my facebook live <laughs> he doesn't even know what we're talking about well, i was getting my facebook live going. going i've already shared it you don't need the live going you paid we're you're we're live it's <laughs> us we're here <laughs> you don't need to watch the video <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my God. What are you hoping? You can't do that on the <laughs> fucking moron. <laughs> what are you doing? It's legal here. Do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Um, Smitty, the question was what are you hoping these wrestling companies do in this time away to hopefully better their product? Uh, WWE, get your credit work on better, more engaged story for sure. Um, AEW, go ahead and review some of the tapes and get and start working out some of the tapes within your company. Um, power, power, just like figure out a way to keep doing what you're doing because you got the is is they're really great. Um, Impact, just find a way to get more people on, get more eyes on you again. You uh, know, that's also the same for all, just about any other like smaller company. Get Find a way, like try to find a way to get more people's eyes onto your product. Uh, that's Smitty's checklist, everybody. How to be successful in the wrestling business. <laughs> right. Like, I'm, I'm just going to tell you exactly what people do already. Like, <laughs> not give any type of information onto what I really hope they do. Just, hey, this is what you're doing. Do it better. Yeah. He's like this. <laughs> if, he's like this Cleo. If he just does vague statements, he can't be wrong all the time. Man. You guys missed out. I really hope you guys can join the Zoom tonight uh, that we're going to do for WrestleMania because we got to do everyone uh, joining up again. And, man, Smitty was just dropping things. We're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, what sorry. Was. Sorry I couldn't do that one last night. There's a lot going on. You were high as hell. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> like um, no, no, no. It was way worse last night. <laughs> <laughs> got couch um, I guess that my next question is then, um, Nick, I, did I ask you or did I start? I started with Z and I went to Smitty. So, Nick. Yeah, you, you, you asked me. I did? Oh, yeah. I'm drunk, guys. Sorry. Right. Get it hey, together, Mike. Get it together. 
this Pepsi, this Pepsi, woo, really hitting hard, baby. Uh, <laughs> so we're moving on to a completely different era in wrestling currently. The first wrestling event, be it WWE, AEW, whatever, do you guys think that you're like, fuck this, I'm going. The first one that hits, I'm, I'll be there. Smitty. At least go sell out too fast for me to try to go. Uh, I would like to point out, sir, that all you have to do is purchase them on the third party market and you can still go, I guess. Like, I don't understand why you have to buy it from Ticketmaster. I will, I would like to go, but all right. because he likes to go out. <laughs> you know, there's a joke in there. <laughs> uh, Nick, first, I mean, you're the one who's been to the most recent wrestling event. Like, you did NXT with the kid, and we were all like, yeah, I'm going to go work during this coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> a day off. Um, so you've obviously been you, – you've been to something since anyone else has been. Um, but do you think, like, one of the first events, if it's, it's like a GCW that canceled in Michigan was supposed to be March 21st, that obviously, you know, got postponed. Um, is there something like, would you go r no matter what? And if it is, what's the company that you would go no matter what versus, yeah, I'd try to go to this one. Um, you know, I know that AEW hasn't been on most of our favorite lists uh, recently, but if they came through Detroit, I would like to go to that show being in Detroit, you know, to see how that works here. Um, if, it, if it was SmackDown, Raw, anything like that, I would – feel the same uh, sense of priority as I usually do. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Pay-per-view probably would change my mind. Um, I, I was really planning on going to that GCW show. I was waiting for the last minute to buy tickets, but um, good thing I did. So, Well, I mean, they would have, you know, they refunded everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, Z, are you, like, whatever it is, it hits Detroit, are you going to go? <clears throat> uh, like Nick's said if it was AEW would be their first show in Detroit so I'd, I'd be all over that one uh AEW pay-per-view or WWE pay-per-view yes anything else it and eh, if I go I go if I don't I don't and that you know raw smackdown all that so see um I for me it definitely would depend on the work situation being the bartender uh in downtown Detroit I work a lot of events, but at the same time, a lot of wrestling is going on now when I'm not working outside of Friday night SmackDown. Um, I can't say that I would jump at the chance for a raw or SmackDown. I mean, I would go. Would you, would you skip? Would I skip? You wouldn't jump, but would you skip to a chance? Uh, no. Um, but I, I might scoot at a chance. I'll okay, scoot. At a chance. <laughs> 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 um, but you know any type of free ticket obviously any one of us would take uh, would I go and spend full price on a ticket depends on what the you know no, what no, the no. I can't say I wouldn't man like cause again it, like I said depends on what the event is if I can get I, I mean hell dude that one hell in the cell that was here I paid a little bit more money than anyone was paying for because you wanted the fucking chair otherwise you would have paid seventy dollars at the rest of us yeah but that chair is sweet I got it and I can hit people with it now <laughs> um, <laughs> it's in my wedding video is it I think it's like the hell in the cell on the oh chair yeah the way at at, uh, at the condo um so I I think for the most part I would probably go. But I don't think I would take a Friday night off for SmackDown, seeing that I haven't been working since March 12th. Uh, I believe it was my last day of work. Uh, maybe 14th. I don't remember. 14th was mine. Was that Sunday or was it Saturday? Yeah, that Sunday. They, they let us all go at like 7. Okay, March 13th then. Um, so, yeah. Maybe. Uh, I would see what I was doing. Now – March 13th was a Friday. Didn't you work that Saturday? That's what I thought. That's why I said 14. Yeah. Smitty yeah. said, well, like, Smitty's wrong all the time. Why did I take fucking <clears throat> Hashtag wrong again. Yeah, Saturday. Well, y'all got to look for us. No, wait. No, no. Yeah, March right. 13th was Friday the 13th. Yeah. And then all this shit happened. And, and then I got 14th. married. Friday yeah. the 13th happened. And then the world ended. Yeah. That's what happened. Um, Moral of the story, don't get married. Why? 
the end of the world. At least I got somebody to spend it with. <laughs> <laughs> bang bang! <laughs> I, I like how he throws up his hand like it's some sort of con con consent. Like it's better because I have you. <laughs> yeah, I got two of them. Oh, <laughs> One's a little strange. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <laughs> So, the <laughs> next hand, the power hand comes up. <laughs> uh, finishing off the conversation about shows without a crowd. Last night was WrestleMania night part one. WrestleMania 36.1, first half of WrestleMania. You got three hours of a show with an hour long pre show. And to be fair, it seems like that's probably what's going to happen again tonight. On Wrestle for WrestleMania the second night. One hour of pre-show, three hour of show, eight hours of WrestleMania spread over the course of two nights. Now, before we go into the show, I want to ask you guys each, are you a more do, do you think WrestleMania should be split up like this in the future? A two-night event where it's two nights at three hours, four hours versus one night at eight hours? Z, we'll start with you. Uh <clears throat> Well, I, I mean, it would be cool if it was stretched over, a, you know, a Saturday, Sunday, because then, you know, a lot of times Saturday you can, you know, hang out, relax, watch WrestleMania, and not have to worry about going to work in the morning. I mean, and then, you know, bigger event Sunday or whatever. Or, but then what do you do with takeovers and shit? Would it be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then you'd have fucking the Hall of Fame on Thursday? Uh, I mean, you could technically do the Hall of Fame whenever. Um, yeah, considering that's what they're doing this year. They're, ha they're not doing it yet. They're doing it until um, some, wait till SummerSlam. <clears throat> More than likely. Um, if that even happens. Okay, Nick, what are you thinking about this two-night WWE WrestleMania? I like the idea um, because, like, Z said, you get that chance on Saturday night to just chill and, and watch Mania and get fucked up and not have to go to work the next day. And um, and then, you know, have the the bigger event on Sunday. And if you're going to Mania, you've got a, a chance to go to essentially two shows, two WrestleManias in essence. And, I mean, fuck it. You can have the Hall of Fame during the day on Saturday. And, you know, I mean, who cares? And, uh, yeah, take over Friday. <laughs> uh, fuck it, you know, and I think it would be a good idea uh, because at your current rate, you're at a seven- or eight-hour Sunday going from 5 o'clock all the way up to midnight. Um, you know, and I, I, think, I think you could pull it off. I think you could. Smitty. Uh, I like the whole two-night thing, but I don't think it's a, thing, a good thing for the long run. You feel like you're like, you spend eight hours at, at work if you are working right now. So this, like, honestly, I don't mind the whole eight hours. Like, it's going to be It's going to be Can this just be or can I not understand Smitty? Well, you have a siren going on in the back of your round of your house, so I wouldn't have been able to understand Smitty either. Oh, well, I'm, my bad. I'll tell them to keep it down next time. <laughs> just mute yourself, nerd. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. I barely knew how to do this, so just leave it at that. Right. Click on your screen, and there's a mute button right there where you, right where you start to, uh, in that menu where you put up your uh, background. Yeah, that one, that particular one. You know I saw nothing you did, right? Go ahead. Click on the screen with your face. I would like to point a mute out button there. If you're having a problem understanding Smitty now, uh, oh, you just muted your video. I'm getting a work call. Okay. Um, he gone. He gone. All right, so Smitty, again, um, two-night WrestleMania. Uh, I'm okay with, with the circumstances this year, but I think I've been programmed at this point now to have WrestleMania be like a work, like work, uh, work day, like hour type, hours type thing. So it also, like, if you have it all in one day, give you time to do like the Hall of Fame, like, to give uh, time to the Hall of Fame and to do um, like the NXT takeovers. And they actually have time to feel important. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on the two. Like, I, like 
it's nice to have it split up this year because it gives us the content. And honestly, I feel like you could probably focus on things more this way, on certain stories, certain matches more this way. But I'm just pro at this point. I'm just programmed for the eight hour spectacle. Um, personally, I'd love to see it go to two days. I think uh, I already do it for Wrestle Kingdom, and that's two days of six hours of show, like each. Yesterday just flew. Um, it ending at ten was wonderful. Um, I was all right with this six to ten, went four hours. If you're if you watch the pre-show. Um, I definitely watched the pre-show. The Drew Gulak and Cesaro match was uh, – we'll get into and stuff. So Amazing. why I watched it was the fact that I knew there was going to be another match on it. And then I watched the pre-show tonight where it's Liv Morgan and Natalia. Natalia. Maybe. Doubt it. Don't know. I don't know. But at the same time, you, you got to see where it goes. I love the flow of the show. I love that it just it, – it didn't feel like a chore to watch WrestleMania, even though we'll get into it. There were definite problems with this show. And watching a no crowd anything sometimes feels like it does take a little bit of time or a labor, a labor of love, as we would say. So to make it seem that you can have this same thing over the course of two nights – I think it's spectacular. Now, the reason I think it actually might happen in the future, maybe not the next one, right? But possibly because they announced the next one in uh, California, uh, March 28th, 2021. Um, ticket sales, man. You know how much more money Vince is going to make for WrestleMania if it's a two-night event? And you got Vince who's going to be sitting there lining his pockets. Let's just say you do WrestleMania the night before. One, again, that was four hours. Give it five and a half, six hours that you're spending at a stadium for night one, okay? And night two. Versus getting there at 4 p.m., leaving there a little bit after midnight, uh, spending all that time where you're in one spot. It's not broken up. But then you could do something like the Hall of Fame Sunday afternoon. If you're not starting WrestleMania till the pre-show is not starting until 6 p.m., it's very easy to do a Hall of Fame at like one t noon, something like that, you know. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, Z Tech saying, is it like double Dutch? Once he leaves, he can't come back. Uh, I don't know if Dave's paying attention. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I think it's there. It is. He's back with the <laughs> so yeah um i i think it i don't mind wrestlemania as a i definitely think it is a possibility that vince mcmahon will capitalize on any type of money and it, because it's later in the day and you're not getting getting out so late it's very possible to do the hall of fame sunday afternoon you can do takeover on friday night you know something like that uh, let's see where it goes. Um, now let's get in to the greatness that was WrestleMania 36. Uh, the great, the weird thing about this is nobody knew what the matches that they were showing were going to be until it was announced on the pre-show. Like the only thing that you knew for sure is that there was going to be a pre-show match each night. That's it. And All right, so you got like. Uh, Kevin Owens in his promo uh, mentioned that on Saturday night that Owens and Rollins were going to happen on Saturday. Yeah, but you didn't really know that. Like, you can throw well, it He simply says this Saturday. Yeah, because that's when WrestleMania started. Everyone was saying it. Even all the announcers were saying this Saturday under uh, – Two big, two nights. Yeah, sorry, Saturday, you're going to get – Brought Braun Strowman versus Goldberg because that's how they announced that Braun Strowman was replacing Roman Reigns. Very unique way. And then they announced, you know, like, <laughs> and then you're going to have uh, Brock Lesnar versus Drew McIntyre, you know, all, start, all starting Saturday. It's like, you didn't know what you were going to get. So last night, you found out what you got. Uh, the pre show match for night one was Cesaro versus Drew Gulak. Uh, then WrestleMania kicked off with the women's tag team uh, championship. 
Uh, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross becoming the first ever two-time tag team champions uh, by defeating the Kabuki Warriors. Then Elias defeated King Corbin. Uh, Lynch defended her title against Shayna Baszler. She retained. Uh, Sami Zayn retained the Intercontinental Championship against Daniel Bryan. Uh, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match was supposed to be a triple threat ladder match. Unfortunately, Miz got sick and wasn't cleared to compete because of all this coronavirus going on. So they instead made it a triple threat, uh, one half of each team. Uh, so it was Jimmy Uso from the Usos, Kofi Kingston from New Day, John Morrison from uh, Miz and Morrison, and Morrison retained the titles in a very uh, different way to end a ladder match. Seth Rollins in what turned out to be a no DQ match. Uh, Seth Rollins using the bell to get out of that match. Uh, Kevin Owens trash talking him until Seth came back to fight him during a no DQ match. Uh, then Braun Strowman defeated Goldberg to become the new Universal Champion. Uh, after seven attempts, he finally got Braun Strowman with the top title in the one of the top titles in the company. Uh, then you had the Boneyard match that everyone had no idea how it was going to go, how it was going to happen, how it was going to end. And Undertaker defeated Baby AJ Styles by killing him at the end of this match, uh, buried him alive, literally. Uh, so it's a buried alive match in a cemetery, basically. So It's okay. He'll, he'll come back on Sunday. That's how that works. Yeah, that's how, yep, this is exactly how that works. All right. So, night one, WrestleMania. Nick, we're going to start with you. What is your highlight? What is the thing that stood out most to you that you loved, that you have nothing but admiration for? Um, well, I would definitely say the ladder match. Um, I was excited for it, if I could use that word, uh, when it was a tag match. Then when they moved it to, you know, one member of each team, I was just kind of like, what, what the fuck are they going to do with that? Um, but it turned out to be really good. And, I, you know, honestly, having an empty performance center, in a, in a sense, hurt the match. But in a sense, it kind of also helped, too, because you really got the feel of what their bodies were going through and, you know, shit talking in the match and things like that. I wasn't I too crazy. Okay, boy. <laughs> I wasn't too crazy about the ending. Like, it was okay, but it was also kind of wonky for me. Um, really? So that was cool. Yeah. Um, I, I did like the Owen spot off of the WrestleMania logo. Uh, I think that worked really well. Um, the Braun Strowman victory, while part of me wanted to be like, yes, they finally gave Braun Strowman, you know, this, this opportunity to run with the major title. But then, you know, Simon Miller from What Culture kind of said it best. He was like, you know, if you look at my body language, I'm just kind of like, eh, that's cool. There goes the duck. Wow, that's really cool, I guess, over there. Like, I don't know. It kind of deflated me at the same time. So, Braun Strowman's body language? No, 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 no. Like, uh, Simon Miller, he, like, was kind of just standing there, and he's like, and then he just kind of, like, slouched over, like, wow. That's really cool that Braun Strowman won the title. I'm finally happy. It's kind of seemed random at this point now. Yeah. No, it wasn't random at all. Braun Strowman winning the title wasn't random. Goldberg dropping the title at WrestleMania. Oh wasn't no, random. not 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 that part. Just the fact <clears throat> that Braun won the title as himself, not Goldberg losing. I figured Goldberg was going to lose if they fucking put Ellsworth in the ring, but Braun himself just Braun Strowman winning the title to me yes definitely random all right because you are you've already built it for Roman and then like kudos to Roman for pulling out because of his health issues but like you know, like and if you gave it a little bit more explanation going into the match like you could have came up with some type of excuse or or whatever you could have just told the truth and said well, like or due to health issues many Braun Strowman for stop hold on turn your phone down it's not my phone. Every time you talk, we, that is not like, me a Z. No, no. Every time that you talk, there's a reverb on it. I understand what Z's saying. It's like it's not just hearing your voice. It's better. 
start kind of like when you call into a radio station and they tell you to turn down the radio. Yeah, because you can like hear yourself through the phone. Yeah. So it's just better. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So talk. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it would have been better if they actually, you, even though it's only been like a one week deal, like have Strowman cut a promo or something. Or like the way they announced Roman being out, it was just Michael Cole saying Braun Strowman will be taking on taking on Goldberg. But like that's why I felt so random because there was nothing besides what Michael Cole said leading into this match. So what were your highs? Uh, your what was one of your highs for WrestleMania? Uh, my high, I agree with Nick, was probably the uh, ladder match. It was a good way to showcase all three of the guys that were in there. And um, especially, I give credit to Jimmy Uso because you don't like usually when you see Jimmy Uso, the Usos are pretty much a pair. Like you've seen them, maybe able to, you've seen them both able to do singles matches, but this is one of those times like you forget like the Usos are actually decent on their own as well, even though they're even though they're better less as a tag team. Um, it was good. This is the first time we got to see Morrison actually like showcase himself, and then Kofi. Was, Kofi is just. Kofi, and he was probably my favorite part of the match. So with his spot trolling hair? Huh? With his trolley hair? Yeah. <laughs> like the trolley gummies? Like, I was like, when I first Welcome saw Welcome to our levels. land. Sorry <laughs> about your hand. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, Kofi, like, he had some of the highlighted spots inside throughout the whole match. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed that latter spot with Jimmy and, uh, and Morrison. When I pretty much the latter missed Morrison the whole time, and he ended oh. up with the eye poke. Um, Z, what were you? What, what was your high for WrestleMania night one? Uh, I had this cookie dough. Oh, different high. Um, <laughs> my high spot, like I, uh, I really enjoyed the Daniel Bryan Sami Zayn match. Really? That, uh, yeah, oh. it, it it was good. Up and I mean, it did turn out the way I wanted it to, but. Uh, the actual match was kind of, kind of like a wrestling clinic. Um, there were some stiff shots in that match. Uh huh. Um, my low would probably be that Gulak and Cesaro didn't get more time. I get it that they were like on the pre-show, but the the pay-per-view was over by ten o'clock, and normally it's eleven. You could have given them an extra, you know, 10 minutes because that match was actually shaping up to be really good, but then it seemed like it ended out of nowhere because, you know, they were short for time. That UFO from Cesaro, that's like an old finisher of his. I yeah. Guess. When he uh, was when when seen uh, Chris Hero, a.k.a. Cassizono. Yeah, and I'd never seen it before. And the fact, and I saw A.k.a. Whole... cottage cheese legs. Huh? Nothing. You said cottage cheese legs for uh, Ono. Oh. But yeah, I'd never seen the I'd never seen the move before, and that was sick. And then he just let him fucking drop. I was like, oh. <laughs> um, my high is was definitely the triple threat ladder match. Um, I, I ha we have to talk about this. Because oh wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a whole other match that happened that was my high. Okay. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the uh, the boneyard match. That's what we were going into. Uh. This match has been getting a lot of high praise on the Twitter machine. Um, a lot of people talking about how it's one of the greatest things. Also, people going, oh, my God, I love watching the final deletion again in WWE. And it's like, yeah, it was Well, they actually did a good camera shit this time. <clears throat> Last time was shitty. This one was good. Um, so this whole match was kind of cool. I mean, I'll, I'll be very honest. I liked it up until the end. Um, there was a couple things I wish would have happened. Like if Undertaker was thrown into that grave and then when he came back, he was one of his older gimmicks. Like then all of a sudden he was the dead man. And then AJ puts him in the grave again and he comes back as the dead man with the purple gloves, like original looking Undertaker style. It's or not ministry. Like you, done it. you know, it's not like you couldn't have done it. You had all this time to edit and put things together, so on and so forth, that they could have went so many different ways. I guess though... That may have been similar to like the Lake of Reincarnation. I didn't even think about that until just now. Uh, but Dead Man in the Grave, it just makes sense. I will say I was happy that he came out as the biker, but 
at the end of it, there was the dialogue, the diatribe going back and forth with Undertaker where Styles is like, don't bury me, don't bury me, I'm sorry. He's like, I'm not gonna bury you, boy. He goes, you put up a hell of a fight. Half the men I fought wouldn't put up this fight. It's great. You know, putting over Styles, and then of course he turns around and knocks him into the grave, and then hobbles over to the John Deere and starts it, and then puts it in gear. Undertaker should have rose his arms and it did it itself. Like. There's so many things that this match they could have done with, with all of the cinematics, all of the cutting and editing that they could have done with this. It just seemed like at the end, got really awkward, really long, and took me out of the match. How are you feeling about that, uh, Smitty? Uh, first thing I thought was when I saw it on praise on Twitter and now people talk about violence, I'm like, let's be honest, it's not the first time Takers killed somebody on camera. So... Uh, when people are talking about the whole burial thing and he murdered AJ, I'm like, not the first time. Was remember when he did it at WrestleMania uh, back in the day when he hung Bossman from the cell? And when he buried. Plus, there's been many buried alive matches. That's what the point, point of it is. Yeah, well, but I was all right with it. it at least I, I kind of agree with you that the ending, they could have did a little bit more with the ending, or at least with Kit Taker's character. Because, honestly, this was just Mark Calloway. This wasn't really The Undertaker. <laughs> but that was the point of it, the whole build and everything. Uh, Z, what was you – you said the Boneyard match was your, your favorite. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> All right, up until the end, it was my favorite. I would – I didn't know what they were going to do with AJ and Taker. Like, I didn't know what kind of shape Taker's in. Just because he – you know, he's in good shape doesn't necessarily mean he's in good ring shape. Um, so when they put together this little video package, I, I was intrigued by it and it kept my attention right until the very end where it looked like they had someone wearing a, a glove on the wrong hand, just <laughs> sticking up out of the grave for like, like just, you know, like, oh, the wax like hand. Michael, some Michael Jackson thriller shit, like, like something that would have made sense had AJ buried the undertaker and like the undertaker's fist is in the air. Like it's not over or whatever, but you, you know, Montez's, Montez Ford's tweet about that. No. Oh, go ahead. I'll pull it up. Oh, all right. Yeah. I mean, just so like it, it was really good uh, production wise shit like that. And then just at the end, they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, this will do fucking amazing. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> good. Shout out to Matt Hart's making these cinematic matches are actually like a thing that people look forward to seeing. Right. Uh, okay, Nick, how, Nick, your thoughts on the bowling match? Um, yeah, I, I liked most of it. Um, you know, it kind of reminded me of the – was it the Sister Abigail match that Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt had in that fucked up house? Um, oh, okay, yeah. The House and, of and Horrors? Was, yeah, House of Horrors, man. There you go, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was pretty good for the most part. I didn't really think about the ending and having him pull, like, an Undertaker-esque type move, like raising his arms and having the shit lower. Um, I didn't think about that until you said it. So, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen something like that. I know it was Undertaker, the man, Mark Calloway, but – he still okay. he still teleported. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he still could have did something. Yeah, he teleported behind him, and he could have pulled some shit off like that. Um, yeah, when they were on the but, roof, and he went like this, and the fire comes up behind yeah. him. Yeah, everything like it's not like he wasn't doing supernatural things this entire match. Exactly. Um, and yeah, the production value was pretty cool. I wouldn't want to see matches like that all the time, but once in a while, I, I'm I'm okay with it. You know, it's. It's, I know it's taken away from the whole, you know, the wrestling purists are like, well, you know, it's fucking bullshit or whatever. You know, it is WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment. So that entertainment part of it, I was okay with it. Um, yeah, I don't, if you're a bitch about this match, I don't even want to see you. Uh, okay, there's a huge difference with thinking about specifics of this match. I think you would have rather seen it versus. What is that? That Z sitting down and making his camera move all over the place so it not. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm done. <laughs> oh, 
Holy shit. It's like dealing with Smitty. Yeah, it's called you Smitty. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even had breakfast yes, yet. He's already on beer number four. Number three. <laughs> there's four. <laughs> oh, this is number three. <laughs> so you can want things to have gotten a little bit better, things that could have been done better in it. Overall, um, I have to say it was not – it wasn't shit. Z, what is, what is the low? What is the thing that you were like, what the fuck? during this WrestleMania, WrestleMania night one. Okay, Smitty, what is the one? Uh, no, I'll go with the, uh, there were, okay, so uh, we all knew it was taped. So there were certain cur- camera angles where I was like, ooh, they edited the shit out of that. You know what I mean? Like, then there was certain audio clips that, I don't know if they, they edited the match and then did the commentary for the match, but it didn't seem like it because it, Seemed like in the first match, like they were cutting certain certain segments and just the words weren't adding up, like uh, as they sounded on TV, if that makes sense. But I mean, for me, it was just the editing job on some Hello, little ones. That, that's why uh, one of my favorite matches was the Sami Zayn Daniel Bryan match because it didn't seem like there was a lot of camera editing in that match. Like they actually got to perform their match and they just used different angles because they could actually use all of the angles because they didn't, you know, fuck up or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Smitty, what was the major low for you for night one? Um, I think it was probably the women's tag matches. It was just so forgettable at this point. Really? I really was not invested in that match whatsoever. What match was that? What match were you not invested in? The women's tag match. And I love I- bitches. Christ. All right, uh, Nick, you're one low from WrestleMania Night One. My low. Wow. Um, well, wow, yowie, wowie. That's tough. I mean, it's not like there were a ton of lows, but I, I think for me. The the opening match with the Kabuki Warriors and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I mean, it was an okay match. It was just a match. Um, I'm used to WrestleMania kicking off with a bang. And I know this was a different WrestleMania um, than we've ever seen before. But, yeah, I just was kind of left like, eh, like if this is what we're going to have for the next three hours, I'm going to get pretty fucking bored pretty fucking quick. But, um but it did pick up from there. So I thought that match was better than Daniel Bryan and uh, Sami Zayn. I thought there was too much going on in that one, actually, too. I, so D- Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn is not my love. But it definitely did. It was the only thing I had expectations for in this entire show, this entire night. Because I knew going into it, you had two wrestlers that could put on wrestling clinics. And it just was meh. It was an all right match. It, just, it wasn't horrible by any stretch of the imagination but i guess because it's the only thing i had expectations for the fact that they didn't live up to it really hurt me now so yeah, go ahead but hold on that was that's kind of what i was talking about like i don't think this is the end of the feud and i think they're gonna have like a summer slam match to culminate this and then they'll have the great match you know what i mean mm-hmm. like it's the first time they kind of met and they need to build to something, especially if they're going to continue with Daniel in the Intercontinental Pictures. So, I mean, that's the kind of shit I was talking about, like, earlier with, I think, some storylines ended not the way they should have because they're trying to progress them forward. All right. Um, but my low completely, 100%, is the Becky lynch Shayna Baszler match. One, the match was okay. Let's, let's not make it seem like this is one of the best matches that either of these women have put on. Two, oh. Shayna lost at the end of it. Are you kidding me? In a wonky you fucking way, too. Woman, like. You brought up a woman and made her look at, like, the strongest, most dominant woman that you have had in your division in a very long time. She is the only person that eliminated everybody in an elimination chamber match. The only 
person. And then she was to a roll up. To a roll up. I'm okay <laughs> with the loss of a roll up in a situation. Like if Becky would have lost that way. That's how Shayna lost her belt the first time in NXT. Kyrie saying. Shayna- it was a roll up. She, I think she was putting them. Uh, I don't remember who won it. From she her put team. a careful to clutch, and Kyrie Sam rolled her into yeah. rolled her on the shoulder. It's not like it hasn't happened before, but that Kyrie Sane win was put in there with the roll up because it was unexpected. It caught Shayna off guard. Shayna had been so dominant for so long that she got in her. It was it built up that she is this confident, cocky son of a bitch, and then she got caught. This is not that. This kills any momentum that she had. Trying to elongate this into a storyline to have it at SummerSlam or something like that, I think is stupid. I think you killed everything that you had with Shayna Baszler and you just are sending her back down to NXT because not once did these, when they were showing her, like her nameplate on the lower third, it always said NXT Shayna Baszler, not Raw Shayna Baszler. So you've had Shayna on the main roster since Royal Rumble, but she's still NXT. Like, to me, it, 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 I can't get my head around this. It's like they never really gave a shit about Shayna, so they just threw her into this and then rolled it up and was like, all right, she's done now. What was the fucking purpose? I, I think this is the worst use you of a fodder in a very – Ever. I think it's the worst use of a call-up, any NXT call-up, period. Except maybe uh, uh, No Way Jose. Easy I, I, I agree oh. with you because you could have progressed the storyline of SummerSlam by having Shayna win and right. then have the two women continue going forward. Now, I mean, the whole storyline here was could Becky beat Shayna? And she did. So now, now what do you do? Like, you move on? And then, you, and then like, that stupid fucking roll-up shit. I don't know, man. I you, you're absolutely right. I forgot all about that match. That's how bad that was to me. Is I forgot it even happened last night. Um, it was by far the worst thing they've done creatively in a long fucking time. And I can't even say that her call-ups worse than EC3 because EC3 hasn't been being used to be destroyed. At least EC3 had some sort of fun with that cup. And then they brought up the Street Profits. They were like, okay, you can't do the cup anymore. But still, EC3 hasn't been, like, squashed or anything uh, horribly to where you're like, wow, that really ruined him. Or uh, yeah. SmackDown, at least. What do you mean? He's on main event pretty much getting squashed. He's pretty much getting beat on main event and uh, superstars. You watch main event because you have no life. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'm not working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I, bro. Neither am I. <laughs> I'm not watching main event either. You have a child, sir. Uh, yeah, that I just got back for the first time in two weeks because I was had the Rona. But again, you completely destroyed any build with Shayna Baszler for this. I thought it was the worst thing about WrestleMania Night One, and I'll be very honest, it took me out of the fucking show because it was that horrendous at the end of that. Sure, you had a couple matches after that, but still, I was just like, what? The- and all, honestly, that may be why I didn't like the Drew, uh, the Daniel Bryan, Sami Zayn match so much because that followed that. It was right after that, and I'm still like sitting there seeing that Shayna Baszler had lost for n- absolutely no reason. Smitty was just talking about it. We were when we were watching. He goes, "You know, I picked a disqualification, Shayna to win by disqualification, or Becky to win by disqualification, and that would have made sense if Shayna was just beating the absolute hell out of Becky Lynch in the corner and the refs giving them the five count and she's just going at it, that would have made sense. She would have lost, but at least it would have been because Shayna wouldn't stop beating the shit out of Becky Lynch, making her just as strong, just as viable, and things like that. It just, this completely killed her to me. Yeah, I thought the the match itself wasn't that bad. There were some pretty stiff shots, and they were really going at it for a while. And But, yeah, I mean, they could have done – Pretty much anything else at the end of that match. Just, you know, had fucking both women just walk away and you'd fucking wonder why. I mean, that would have made more sense. Yeah. But, the, I mean, that shitty roll-up, even if that would have happened 10 minutes later and Shayna fought her ass off and there were nine near falls and she just couldn't pin Becky, that would have made more sense. But, I mean, just, okay – and Becky won. I was sitting there watching it, and I was not ready. You know how, like, 
you'll get that feeling of, like, okay, this match is coming to a head. It's going to end soon. I ain't fucking get that feeling at all. I just like, oh, it's over. Yeah, that yeah. sucks. No, I, I was like, oh, shit, that was the ending. Like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just, I'm just thinking they could have salvaged that ending if they just had Shayna beat the hell out of Becky after it was over instead of having her just sit in a corner like in disbelief. Yeah. Like you could have you could have you could have built some something else like just have Shayna beat that dog. You shit had out Shayna bite the back of her neck to start this fucking promo. <laughs> And then, like, you don't have any color or anything. Like, it wasn't even that competitive of a fucking match. Uh, I will say, though, all of the things, like, you, you, I was surprised I saw blood in the Boneyard match. But that's because Taker's arm busted. He, he pulled a Goldberg. When Goldberg broke that one window and it fucked his arm up, that's what Taker just did. I love the- how he sold it, too. He's like, oh, I cut myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you couldn't, you couldn't have color or anything like that in any of these other matches for the simple fact of the times we're in, the coronavirus, COVID-19. Like, you can't be risking things more like that. You know, the Undertaker thing was, oops, this happened because of, like, he, when he grabbed that little pipe and stuff, it was just supposed to bust. The world's smallest pipe. Instead. You can't edit that, Right. I mean, you could, I guess, you know, but all of a sudden now Taker would have to do a completely different entrance with, you know, tape on his arm or something like that. But you couldn't have the color in any other of these matches because for the simple fact that there's way too much with all of this shit, you know? Um, so that being said, Nick, we're going to start off with you, then Z, then Smitty. Uh, what's the thing that you're looking for more, most forward to WrestleMania night two? Um, I, I still have, I still have interest in Brock and, uh, and Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Um, but based on what we saw with the Boneyard match, okay, now I'm like, all right, well now we have this Firefly Funhow match. Are they going to be pulling off the same idea where it's a cinematic match? Oh yeah. Maybe in some fucking fun house or uh, I don't know, but I'm, I'm more interested in that now than what I was before. All right. Z. Um, I didn't even <laughs> connect the dots with the whole Firefly Funhouse match. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, being disappointed when Brock retains from Drew. <laughs> and uh, beyond that, I mean, well, I, I'm curious to see how, who takes the Rhea Ripley-Charlotte match, because I had a real tough time picking that one on my score. Card. I did too. I did too. So, I'm looking forward to see how that one that one goes. I, I thought that was a sure thing, Rhea Ripley winning that. Yeah. I well, why? That why? Because Charlotte's not going down to NXT. Why not? Well, right now, right now, right now on NXT, they're time. cheering, go back to Raw, go back to Raw. That makes her the perfect fucking heel for NXT. <laughs> uh, Smitty. Uh, kick his ass, Steve. I'm looking forward to Otis versus Ziggler. Probably the best story, the best built story that they, the WWE has right now. <laughs> None of you mentioned the last man standing between Randy Orton and Edge. Because nobody cares. Really? Edge, Edge is going to win. Edge has to win. No, I think Orton's going to win out, win. actually. I think just Edge, okay, just Edge is actually – he's going to go out on his back and actually retire to, on his own terms. No, he signed a contract. He signed a three-year a certain... deal, you dumb fuck. So he's going over in this match. Yeah. I don't think it's the only reason to have this match. I also truly believe Edge is winning this, but I'm looking forward to it as my most anticipated thing because of one, the storyline that was built, two, the match that these two could put on. Right? So night one, my only match. Oh, in an empty was- fucking arena? Yeah. A fucking empty, the last man standing match in an empty yeah. arena. Holy fuck. Right? So, night one, my only match I had expectations for, Daniel Bryan and Sami Zayn. Night two, the only match I have expectations for is Randy Orton and Edge. That being said, I still think Drew McIntyre is going to go over, and it's only going to take one Claymore kick, and he's going to knock the fuck out of Brock Lesnar. Claymore country. (laughs) All right. Final thing that we're going to discuss. Uh, Dark Side of the Ring came back. Uh, first two episodes, uh, well, the first episode was a two-part episode. So the first two hours of this show was the Chris Benoit uh, story. And then episode two was called The Life and Crimes of New Jack. Uh, 
let's let's kick it off with obviously their first episode, a very polarizing episode because there's a lot of people that honestly can't stand Chris Benoit for the things that he did, but also can't separate the body of work the man had versus the last 72 hours of his life. Um, Z, we're going to start with you because you are always, you and me always make all the Chris Benoit jokes, period. They always run back and forth. If there's a meme to be posted, uh, 90% of the time it was you that posted the Chris Benoit meme. Uh, other 10% of the time it was Smitty. Um, so you get into this, you watch it. There's a lot of things to take away that people didn't know. They also brought in a lot of Eddie Guerrero with this. And to find out that Eddie passed away in Chavo's arms, that, I had never known that. I never heard anything like that. But they, ha they had to put Eddie in here because Eddie is part of the reason Chris lost it there at oh, the yeah. end. So then you find out that, because Chavo, you know, Chris calls him and he goes, are you sitting down the same, within the same hour? Because they were all supposed to go work out together. And he asked him if he was sitting down. And he said, Chris Benoit, a guy that never showed emotion, which is crazy to think about that these are some of his best friends and the dude never showed emotion to them. Chris breaks down. And then you see the emotion that Chris had uh, in the Eddie Guerrero tribute show. And then how WWE did the tribute show because they have all of the full details to the Chris Benoit situation. And then Jericho goes, but William Regal was really telling in what he said because William was like, all I'm gonna say is he put out a really good body of work, right? And Regal, as Jericho said, because William Regal lived in the area that Chris Benoit did, so we had a lot more information than everybody else. Then to find out that WWE just cut ties with the Benoit family and uh, Nancy's family, uh, just completely, 100%, no anything, no, you know, they sent JR to the funeral, but JR also said he wanted to go because he loved Chris Benoit. Um, so looking at this, the entire thing, everything, what are your major takeaways from this episode of uh, Dark Side of the Ring? Uh, that they finally got the, the family to agree to, you know, talk on a documentary series. Um, I've done a lot of research on the Benoit double murder, suicide, whatever, um, only because I, I truly believe for the longest time that he, he didn't do it and that he was set up by – Kevin Sullivan, who was also mentioned in this documentary. And um, couldn't even talk in the documentary. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I didn't really learn anything new um, other than, you know, uh, direct emotion from Jericho and stuff. Like, he's narrating it, but he, you know, was also there when, you know, when it happened and stuff like that. So... I mean, for me, again, I didn't learn anything new, but at the same time, like, you, you get a better timeline. It's actually nice to finally hear them talk about it on TV and, and not be such an outcast because, unfortunately, it was a tragedy, but there's a lot that can be learned from this tragedy going forward, you know, with head injuries, and, and we have. Like, that's the whole reason why WWE has the, the wellness policy they have now. So. Yeah, they, they did a great job for those first two hours of Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, Nick? You know, I didn't know how close uh, – one thing that I learned, um, how close Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit were at, at that time for the longest time. Um, I knew they were friends and, and whatever, but I didn't know that it was the relationship that it was. So, you know, when they started diving into the world of Eddie Guerrero and what happened upon his death, you know, and you see Chavo's reaction and Vicky's reaction and all these memories that are getting brought up, that's stuff that was sort of new to me. So, um, you know, that part of it really kind of pulled me in even more and more so than what I was already interested. Um, but it was, uh, it was nice to finally – the only thing I've ever really seen was just speculation, people making comments here and there. Nobody actually ever, no interviews, no documentaries obviously have ever been made from this. So that, that was really interesting to, to see that. And I didn't learn anything new. I don't know much about the whole Kevin Sullivan situation that Z had mentioned. I'm very interested in that now. 
So I, I'll have to go and do some research on that part of it. But, um, but it was, it was really interesting and I'm glad they finally made something like that. I, I did, I did have a takeaway from this though. I did actually have one. I went back and watched that match between Kevin Sullivan and Chris Benoit at Super Brawl. So I could see how much of a slug fest it actually was. Yeah. That was crazy um, to hear about. Smitty. I like the way the, how they talked about Benoit's discipline. Uh, it was all, it was said that he's always been like really into his craft and uh, some of the discipline there, the way he uh, and the way he took things inside and out the ring. Like his discipline for the for the uh, sport of professional wrestling. I'm uh, glad that this this uh, this documentary shed light on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean there was a lot of things uh, with this. My uh, my biggest takeaway was. Mostly uh, the reactions from Eddie's, like, uh, his his passing, like Vicky saying that you know Benoit was laying on his uh, Eddie's side of the bed, holding Eddie's pillow, you know, just crying and stuff, or being in the house just you know, crying and stuff like that, and it, then saying that. But when he got around the boys, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, right? Yeah. You know, um, and I mean, that's a part of like what everyone does in their daily life is, you know, you know, one of the things that any, a lot of people's jobs preach is work is work, home is home, keep the two separate. And, it, you know, Benoit being the constant professional definitely kept uh, home life separate. And they said that they thought it helped them that they bought the journal, but it turned out that he was getting out a lot of weird emotions. In, <clears throat> excuse me in that journal to when they read it, they were like, this is like the diary of a madman diving into it. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, oh, so, like, some, like some of that discipline I was talking about, like the wild discipline and um, pretty much in life, in the, throughout his life. Like you mentioned earlier, like um, the whole squat thing when he said he barely missed Jericho with the heel kick. So how many squats do you do for killing your family? He didn't do any. Well, he got off scot free, fucker. He uh, was trying he to get off squat free. You said he did one pull up. <laughs> <laughs> one pull up for a lifetime. All it took was one pull up. <laughs> one, one pull up was the punishment for killing your family. <laughs> you won't see that stretch on DDT, DDP yoga. <laughs> oh. <laughs> DDP, why you gotta do that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, episode two, The Life and Crimes of New Jack. Uh, I watched it Smitty live. Smitty is fucking geek. Z, I think you watched this live as well. I did. I and did. we're both like in the chat talking uh, about it to Smitty. Um, because at the time I wasn't on the Facebook, so we had a, a different group chat going, sorry, Joe, you're a green bubble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Poor people. Um, Smitty, we're going to start with you because you eventually watched it. Uh, what were your takeaways from New Jack? Uh, New Jack tries to be professional, but if you cross him, he's going to fuck you up. Tries? So if you, no, if you cr try to cross New Jack, he will fuck you up. What, cross? One dude was just like, all right, whatever, man, let's go. That's not crossing, that's just getting fed up with the conversation. But also, one of the biggest things is that I introduced uh, well, my roommate, to Sam. I introduced Shannon to New Jack throughout this documentary. You what? I introduced Shannon to New Jack throughout this Like, personally? Like, hey, no. this is New Jack. I know this black guy. No. No, we all know. <laughs> she didn't know anything about New Jack until I showed this documentary. I was showing her New Jack clips. It's like, this fucker's just fucking nuts. All right. Uh, Nick, I'm, in, I'm intrigued by your uh, response to this because we have all been these diehard wrestling fans for so long. And like you said, your basic knowledge of uh, the wrestling business was mostly WWE until you kind of got into this show. So seeing all the New Jack stuff in ECW, in Mid-South, and then obviously Post, what is your takeaway from the life and crimes of New Jack? I want to try and find... Uh, as many of these matches as I can. Uh, um, <laughs> WWE Network. You can find New Jack on WWE Network under ECW yeah. interviews. Um, yeah, I the only only experience that I had with New Jack prior to this was seeing 
pictures, hearing his name, and seeing the preview for Dark Side of the Ring. Um, and then whatever you guys had ever mentioned about him before, and and the I can't pinpoint any specific comments that you said, but anytime his name gets mentioned, in my mind I'm like, sounds like a bad motherfucker. <clears throat> so yes, he is. <laughs> um, it it was there was there's a lot going on there, and that's probably you one of the better me. one of the better episodes of Dark Side of the Ring that I I've seen. Um, my biggest takeaway though is you know. Why wasn't I more into wrestling at this point? Because this shit was beyond anything that I had been watching with WWE. Like, this was a lot of holy shit moments. And I, I wish that at, in his peak, we had more of this, you know, blurred line between what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. Like, to just kind of dive more into what he's about. And this opened up that door. I, I'm, I am though. I'm very interested to go back and try and find uh, as many of his matches and that I can, especially that full match with him and Sandman, just to go back and watch that whole thing. Um, uh, and I believe the Sandman one was uh, back in '98. This uh, new one, Sandman, was back in '98, the fall of '98. Z, are you there? I know the video's gone. No, he's not there. All right. So my takeaway from the new Jack thing. Uh, when he tased the big dude, right? Um, <laughs> and threw him off the scaffold. <laughs> he said, he literally said he was, okay. So D'Lo's talking about it. He goes, if he would have hit the ground, he would have died. And then it cuts the new Jack who was like, I was trying to throw him all the way to the ground, but I didn't throw him hard enough. Like he literally is basically <laughs> saying, I wanted to kill this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> but he also talked about how, like, when he talked about that spot and then when my man got tried to punk out, he, that's when he threw him. He didn't punk out. He tased him. He punked out from the one earlier that fucked New Jack's head up. And then New Jack was like, this dude didn't call me. I was gone away for a year. He goes, I was trying to kill this motherfucker. What? Like, legit on this show is saying, I wanted to kill him. No and fucks I given. I thought I thought it was hilarious because then on his Twitter feed afterwards, if you if you were following New Jack, people were like, "Wait, so Chris Benoit, a dude that murdered his family and then killed himself, is was put over as this really good guy, but New Jack's a problem because New Jack New Jack didn't fucking murder anyone. No, Mur New Jack tried to murder people, and New Jack just didn't do it. He did. He's a really bad murderer because he didn't he, kill. He stabbed anyone. a nigga in the like seven <laughs> right. times. He's like, oh, I was, I was raised up and my dad wasn't around. Yeah, you wonder why I think the way I think? Motherfucker, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, this shit was fucking nuts. Well, he I stabbed a motherfucker in a ring. Right. He was like, I counted it. News said 13 times. It was nine. It was only nine. <laughs> I counted it. You know, I, I knew how many times I stabbed this guy. What? Another thing, another thing is like, uh, I was a little bit too young for his, for his uh, Mid-South run. But I actually do want to go back and watch some more of his Mid South run because Cornetti was saying like we tried to build a heel yeah. off of all the uh, social unrest within the black community and use that as a heel because they were down in Atlanta. You know, I'm I'm gonna say this about this because this is something that I was that when I was watching I was like, but you're kind of bringing it to the situation that it became. So when New Jack's like. I saw this and I wanted to recreate the Rodney King thing, but with us beating the white people, my first thought is, so I, I get it. You're trying to get heat and you're thinking this is the South. These people are, uh, you know, Hicks, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. Um, they got, we're coming out there calling us nigger. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's kind of like you're, you're doing something that would incite that reaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, I get it. You're trying to get heat. You're trying to be the bad guy. And to be the bad guy when you're black in the, in the South, the smart thing to do is to attack, you know, the white. I mean, very honestly, most, I mean, dude, when I lived down there, it was a completely different world when I lived in Florida. A lot of people are 100% just like that. They're dropping the N-bomb like crazy. Those Confederate flags are flying. But it comes to a point where you also kind of have to accept responsibility for what you're bringing upon yourself. Now, like the one time when Hunter Red, when he was fighting Hunter Red, 
and the crowd just kept calling him the N word. He wasn't doing anything uh, like race baiting or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that was just that crowd being complete pieces of shit. Okay. But for the mid South crowd, it's like when Delo's like, you got to kind of go out there and work and they're just, you know, dropping these N bombs on you and stuff like that. And he goes, it's kind of hard to concentrate and do your job when that's their response. And it's like, but weren't you kind of doing things to incite that response? Like, Smitty, am I wrong here? Because to attack all the, the race baiting things that were going on at that time, it just seems like what you were doing is you wanted that response, but you can't then complain that you're getting that response. I don't think New Jack was complaining. I think other people were complaining about him getting that response. He knew what he was doing at that point. But, like, okay, so D'Lo's saying it, though, if, if you're talking about it, like, again, D'Lo's still a part of that, right? Yeah, well, maybe D'Lo's point of view is different from New Jack and um, Mustafa's. All right. All right. Um, I really wish Z was here because I wanted to talk, him to talk about the New Jack thing, but he must have got a fuck, another work call. Fucking nerd. Um, that's it for us, ladies and gentlemen. Um, next week, uh, we'll do a show, obviously talking about maybe another episode of Dark Side of the Ring, uh, WrestleMania Night 2. Uh, see what WWE does to finish off the week. Uh, see how far AEW has gone with any pre-taped things because who knows if any of these wrestling companies are going to be going on after this. It's a weird time we're living in this, man, because of the coronavirus and everything like that. Um, I don't know. Obviously, we're going to try. We're definitely going to come back for one week after this. I don't know what we're going to have to talk about post this. Uh, week for the next show so hopefully we'll be around hopefully we'll have some more stuff to talk about maybe just do a couple things here or there on facebook and on twitter uh so make sure you guys are following us if you go to breaking down the ring.com you can find all of our social media facebook twitter instagram youtube all that fun stuff um nick what are some words that you have for the viewers the listeners and things like that uh, <clears throat> stay home and stay well, wash your ass. Um, don't hoard toilet paper and love each other from a distance. Six feet away, bitch. Six feet. And I'm glad you're feeling better, Mikey. Thanks. Smitty. You know, well, uh, in the words of Cardi B, coronavirus, the shit is real. <laughs> uh, I hope you post that. Me saying that out because I just I, I don't no, like it. No, you quoted Cardi B, bro. You man, oh, and I hate her. I don't, I don't like her. Oh, Smitty B over here. Coronavirus. <laughs> Get it real. Uh, uh, yeah. Stay safe, everybody. Uh. Take Same care thing. Of yourselves uh, and each other. Make sure you guys are washing your hands. Stay home. Stay everything. It's this shit's real. I dealt with it. I had it for, um, you know, I kept. I keep saying a week, but I guess I kind of had it for a, like a week and a half because that fever kind of started Tuesday, and I, you know, I would take some Tylenol because I had a headache. So I guess that was also killing the fever. So I didn't really know how how long I had this fever until I really thought about it. So yeah, man, I dealt with this for like a week and a half from like. A little over a week and a half from one Tuesday to the following to the Sunday, second Sunday that followed that, uh, with the major symptoms being from Saturday night through Thursday, Friday. Uh, it's crazy, man. Stay home, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't go get your fucking nails done. Don't go try and go get a fucking home haircut from your barber. Stay home. Get shaggy. Look like Smitty. It's fine. It's totally okay. Or just shave. Look your at this. Look at this shit. Look at what shit. There's nothing there. My fucking, my head. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> I'm about to have that old school accountant look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Again, go to BreakingDownTheRing.com. Support the podcast, man. Breaking Down The Ring will take you to the official merchandise site as well. Buy a shirt, man. We can use any type of help. Don't, don't. Oh, I thought you were unzipping. What really? Do you not know what's oh fucking Christ? We are your ring crew, Nick.
Nick, not sick. Oh, dick. <laughs> Nick, not sick, dick. Oh, I'm just me. And me, the all Mikey one, Mikey himself. Uh, watch WrestleMania tonight. Have fun. We're going to come back next week and talk about it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And we are out. Hi, Dave. We're ready. We're done. Thanks, Dave. Dave did great. He probably thinks it's going to end at one, so he took a smoke break right now. So we're just, <laughs> and we're we're still- just live. We're still live on Facebook. We're still live on like. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Kerr for uh, giving us, like, having mentioned on Facebook. Shout out to Stefan for, for um, chiming in. Give all the shout outs. Huh? Give all the shout outs, dog. I'm trying to do them. All that. It's my damn Facebook page for fucking so get everybody in some names. Shout out to Smitty's hair for interrupting that digital background that's on his feed. That is so weird, isn't it? <laughs> Smitty had to give him, <laughs> Smitty had to give himself a casting couch because uh, a background because he's sitting on the casting couch. I think Dave's back. Dave, are you back? No, I thought that was Dave coming back. We're just gonna sit here and have fun and, <laughs> and I mean, technically the show's supposed to go to one, but you know, there's only so much you can talk about in fucking professional wrestling. Yeah, especially with all this shit going on. So. Right. I'm giving a little shout out to everybody else. Uh, hit the like button for us. So we got uh, Stefan, Speed, Duck Dilk, Catherine Burke, Chris Scalier, Rick Santiago. I can't read that first name. Nuyen, Alex Hoffman, David Phillips, Luke. I can't read that last name. Cootie Allen. Devin McKenzie. What? All watching and giving a. And also, Devin also uh, gave us a share as well. Hey, thank. Wait, were you like, what were you on the podcast Detroit page? Bringing out the ring. Oh. Page. On the podcast Detroit page, I think Kerr, yeah, Kerr um, commented, Jesus Z. Then we had um, on your page, yeah, Stefan Speed. Kyle Collison, Matt Gonzalez, Amanda Luber, Lauber, Patrick Foodie, Martez Ale. Joe commented, he said it was a Smoky Mountain, not Mid-South, and it was Tennessee, not Atlanta. Whatever. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they went down to Atlanta for something, I want to say. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my watch alerted me that we're supposed to have a WrestleMania party at B-Dubs tonight. Um, bum, yeah, bum, 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 bum. supposed to be there. Uh, I mean, look, you could be a part of a Zoom party, bro. I, the, are you going to watch it live? Watch yeah, us. I, I'm, I'm going to go to B-Dubs and stand outside and watch it on my phone. Seems weird. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that. Seems awkward. Um, yeah. Dave, still waiting on you to come back. Dave's taking a long cigarette break. Just, <laughs> we all just sign off. It's just a, a live feed of the podcast Detroit logo. Yeah. Dead air. <laughs> um, yeah, then I'm really sad Z took off. I'm really sad Joe couldn't be a part of it. Maybe next week. Oh, yeah. Joe doesn't like this. Yeah. What? This mini? What was that? That's the background. Somebody else is talking. Oh. The landlord. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a lot. You know, you, you, know, you didn't mention uh, people going. Well, I guess they can't do processing scorecards anymore because it's locked. For Mania. Oh, so oh, no, Pro Wrestling Scorecards did a night two one. So yeah, Pro Wrestling Scorecards dot, dot com, uh, digital dot Pro Wrestling Scorecards dot com. You guys can go uh, sign up for the uh, next night, night two. Um, is you could just do all the matches that are going to be happening uh, this evening, which is crazy to me. That I mean, I, I, I get WWE fucked them. They couldn't give them a two nights of scorecard to where you could adjust anything because of that. 
you know? Yeah. I will say I'm not adjusting. You guys it. always run long. I was I was watching you on the video. I figured you were going to run till at least one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> not even have so much to talk about tonight. Uh, <laughs> Dave's like shit. Got to get back to cigarette. <laughs> yeah, we're done, man. All so, right, I will. Uh, let me kill the live, and I'll kill the.